Hi, and welcome to another episode of Getting It On with Bonnie. My dear guest today is Assistant Professor Dr. Hector Calillo. He's from San Francisco State's Department of Sexuality Studies, and he is also the principal investigator of a new study called the Trajecto Study. Mm -hmm. And basically what this study does, it assesses the HIV and AIDS risk, risk of Mexican-American men, both U.S. born and immigrant. Why this population? Why this specific population? Well, the, the study focuses um, mainly on the, on the sexuality and HIV risk of the Mexican immigrant men. Okay. And uh, for the study, uh, we decided to include a uh, sample of uh, U.S. born Latino men right. so that we could compare them. There's been research in the past that have suggested that there's only one kind of homosexuality that is uh, available to men in Mexico. The partner who, who penetrates passes it regular, you know, and, uh, and the one who's penetrated is the one stigmatized. Right. And certainly that emerges in our study, but mm -hmm. from uh, research that I had done in Mexico before this study, I, I knew that uh, the situation was more diverse. And one of the f uh, goals of the study was to understand if there are different kinds of, uh, under, uh, different understandings of, of male homosexuality in Mexico, how does that translate into the sexualities that these men have once they are in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. And uh, are there any implications in terms of their uh, HIV risk? I remember mm -hmm. reading in the study that, and I was really surprised because I guess I have a little bit more of a U.S. sensibility where it's very, well, if you don't protect yourself, it's not my job to remind you to protect yourself. Yes. And that seemed very different with Mexican participants. Mm -hmm. I think that reflects the particular cultural scripts around collectivity and differences between individuality and collectivity in the sense that uh, the, some of the Mexican participants have very uh, assimilated uh, notions that, uh, that sexual partners must protect each other. Now, imagine what happens in a situation where one sexual partner is thinking, of course, if there was something you know, that he had to tell me or, or if uh, there was a, an issue in relation to HIV, he would tell me, he would protect me. Well, the other partner, partner may be thinking, uh, well, if he's not asking for condoms or not mentioning anything about it, it probably means that you know, he has made his decision, it's his own personal decision. So the contrast between collectivity and individuality mm -hmm. in terms of the discourse was very, very interesting. The other important finding has to do with understanding that the immigrant population is not homogenous, that there's quite a variation. And so in trying to explain why are there such variations in the immigrant population, what we were able to do in this study is to pay very close attention to how the starting points of the immigrants in Mexico really influence the kinds of sex uh, that they have in the U.S. and the way that they interpret uh, their HIV risk and their sexuality. Because that's yeah. a very important point, the yeah. diversity within the group. It's yeah. not just one homogenous you know, yes. group of men. There's a lot of diversity. And I was wondering if you could speak a little bit more to that. Well, once you begin to, I mean, it, it relates to things that we've already talked about. Because there's so many stereotypes, about. especially yeah. in the U.S. Oh, the Mexican immigrant They're all the worker, same. everybody's yeah. the exact yeah. same. I think that really does just add to the problem in yes. general. Well, you have to pay attention to whether immigrants came from urban mm -hmm. or rural areas, from large cities versus small cities, um, whether uh, what their sort of social class position was, their levels of education, and, and all of that influences their, their experiences before migration, which makes for also very different ways of becoming integrated into mm -hmm. U.S. society. All of that needs to be taken into account. And in fact, programs that have paid attention to these issues have been successful at building from the ground up strategies that immigrants themselves, you know, develop. And so when these men do come into the U.S., the men in your study, they were in San Diego in the Hillcrest area, mm -hmm. which is a predominantly gay neighborhood. Am I it, well, it's a, it's a mixed neighborhood, but it's considered to be the gay area of San Diego. The gay the area yeah. of San Diego. There yeah. we go. My faux pas. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when these men came in, were they... Were they happy? Was it what they expected? Mm -hmm. Was it new to them? Can you tell me a little bit about their first experiences <laughs> in the neighborhood? Well, one thing that is interesting, and this is where the, the differences in terms of where they started really begin mm -hmm. to show, is that for some of them 
who came from large cities in Mexico who were very attuned to the internet or, or to the sort of global networks of gay mm -hmm. men, they often had gay friends already in San Diego. And, uh, so they, got, they were taken out of the town. That was pretty easy. You well, I mean, some of them in. arrived directly into yeah. Hillcrest, you know, soon after arriving, and they became incorporated into the gay community there. Now, some others uh, didn't know about the existence of gay neighborhoods in the U.S. There was uh, actually uh, one man in the study, and I remember reading a quote yes. from him, where he was saying he was looking for Hillcrest and he was right. walking for hours and hours. Yeah, that's an interesting, uh, an interesting case of someone who only learned that there was a gay neighborhood when he overheard uh, co-workers talking about this area. And he sort of perked up and, you know, wanted <laughs> to sort of figure out where this was. And uh, eventually he just walked, you know, like 40-something blocks to get there. Once he got there, he didn't see anything that told him this is a gay area. And as he was leaving, he saw some guys holding hands and he said, okay, it's here. I've arrived. <laughs> yes, I've arrived. And so what is interesting is also to think about how the differences among the immigrant men had to do with things like that, you know, how much they knew about uh, gay neighborhoods, about gay mm -hmm. life in the U.S., about uh, the particular cultural patterns of, uh, of male homosexuality. Right. And the more they knew, the ra more rapidly uh, that they integrated into, mm -hmm. the, into the gay community. The less they knew, the longer that it took them. So speaking of this newness to a new culture, to a new yeah. city, to a new area, how does that work in conjunction with their HIV risk? Well, what, uh, what uh, all of this has demonstrated and confirmed is something that we've known for a while, which mm -hmm. is that the social context really influences HIV risk, that it really influences the kind of sexual behaviors that people have. And, uh, and I I you know, one of the recommendations that emerges from the studies uh, has to do with the importance of, of paying attention to the social and cultural context. In, in we don't live in a vacuum, basically. Exactly. And also in understanding why it is that you might find people who are well informed about HIV, who have all the skills to, to use protection, to practice safe sex, and who in particular situations might not protect themselves. There was one interesting mm -hmm. anecdote, again, from the study where there was a man describing his first experience in a bathhouse. Yes. And there was a very attractive man, and he usually said, he, he had said that he usually would always, you know, use a condom, always use protection. Yes. And in this instance, he didn't feel as though he had the wherewithal to do so. Yes. I mean, part of what happened there is that in Mexican cities, there are the equivalent of uh, bathhouse, uh, gay bathhouses in some of the large cities, but not in the smaller ones. Mm -hmm. uh, what, it, you know, is uh, more typical in smaller cities is just regular, you know, steam baths where men go to take a bath and sometimes gay sex mm -hmm. happens. But the rules of interaction are a little different. So for this particular man, for instance, the idea of an institutional gay bathhouse with particular rules of interaction about how it is that men, you know, talk to each other, mm -hmm. uh, have sex with each other, etc., was something very new. And so in the context of all that, Just everything that he knew saying. about yeah. HIV didn't kick in because he was exploring, like, how do I do this? Thank you so no much, problem. Dr. Carrillo. It was a pleasure and an honor. Well, thanks so much. And we will see you next time for another episode of Getting It On With Bonnie.